while listening to some of my feeds this morning, there was something brought up about, again, election security. And as I've kind of been going around over the last almost a decade now, election security has been a topic I've kind of touched on a little bit before in past videos. But, and covered kind of the same ground that I'll probably cover now. But in a lot of ways, it still hasn't changed as I've noticed things coming through. They talk about election integrity and security and so on. And DEF CON started their voting machine village or voting village back in 2017 after Donald Trump won in order to reveal the vulnerabilities within voting machines. And it is within that that under that auspice that many people got into these voting machines within 10 minutes. So on the X account for the DEF CON voting village, which again happened last week, oh, you can see different things that they had, different setups, and so on. And again, people were able to exploit vulnerabilities on these machines that are actually used in the processes of voting. And there were a couple other things introduced with this last DEF CON as well. Because as and even in this example here, we've got someone that did pwn one of the voting machines. But it comes down to a lot of this part of it is that you have to have like direct access to it, which isn't hard when you're in a voting situation and depending on how they have the machines set up it's not hard to have enough time to go through all the trouble of setting all this up, closing yourself off and not looking too suspicious. You're going to, you may take a while, but there we are. Oh, you have a couple people popping in, more people popping in. And then of course, making sure that everyone had the best experience possible you can do this to voting machines as well. And again, keep in mind that a lot of these are still used in voting situations. Now, there are some criticisms of how this is set up and so on. Okay, these are all before it. So I I'm not too worried about what is direct, like said leading up to it about what they do, like, everyone has their bent i'm more worried about like what they did in it so is an interactive educational so the voting village is an interactive educational environment that provides the public with a unique opportunity to have hands-on experience with our current election infrastructure attendees will be able to interact with multiple different types of voting systems all of which are currently in use across the country today hackers will have the opportunity to test how secure these voting systems truly are and will report to the voting village leads any vulnerabilities they find. The Voting Village explores all aspects of election security and works to promote a more secure democracy. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, let's see. Having an open research environment like the Voting Village helps offset the misinformation and disinformation that is rampant leading up to a presidential election. Voting Village not only addresses the election infrastructure and related issues, but also focuses on information integrity as a critical element of our ed election system. Our talk, yeah. So a big part of it is why I would be looking at it is the fact that, again, this is important for elections and affecting world events and shaping world events. We've already got multiple different ways of affecting world events, but one tool set is the machines. And way back in like 2016, almost a decade ago now, people were like, well, it's not that secure. It took them 10 minutes to get in in 2017 into the system. And so how do we know that our everything's really that secure when you're running Windows XP or whatever on it or an embedded system on a voting machine? And maybe it's going or however they're transferring the data that people that are snooping in on it can see it plainly, and so on and so forth. So these are the important, to and to important topics that they would be covering, I would assume. I would have to go back and look through to see what 
talks they have recordings if they did do any recording which if they didn't i would be remiss they should have but that may be coming later anyway it is critical because it affects not only the united states but also other elections around the world a lot of precincts rely on these machines whether it be for tallying votes or for people to vote directly and so here from 2022, you've got an inspection of a voting machine right here in this one. And era, they're talking about the era of the big lie and addressing the real vulnerabilities. So today, the main thing is still the same. Tell what are the real vulnerabilities, but fight against conspiracy theories, misinformation, claims of facts that didn't happen, claims of weirdness that didn't happen, said Harry Hursty, co-founder of the Voting Village and a pioneer election security researcher. So what I've seen over the last little bit is not too much done as far as, I guess, legislation to make sure that these voting machines are properly secured and have good digital security. I could be wrong. I could be corrected in the comments. If there are things that address digital security in a competent way, and not in a boomer way that is very incompetent, then do let me know and I will come back to this topic later on. Let's see, there was another K. Context informs some of this year's programming in the village, staffers from Maricopa County, Arizona, home to some of the most intense post-2022 election conspiracy theories, gave a presentation on how their elections work. Okay. See, election officials from Georgia in June detailed the threats they'd received from Trump supporters, a disturbingly common report across the country over the last two years. Um, any threats, like, again, you should not be threatening people. You should be doing Freedom of Information Act requests, not threatening officials or auditors. It is proper to audit an election. It is not proper to threaten those election officials in their job if they scrub records then they should be investigated for it they should not be threatened with their lives for it if they and in in the process of the investigation it's found that they ha were actually scrubbing records and things like that because they didn't want the results to come out or that they're fluffing around and pushing things off then yeah imprison them or do whatever means legal means necessary to punish them but no threats let the process take its course and back the pro use the process to get things through rather than threats like some parties will pull in order to get what they want let's see the unprecedented pressure on election administrators from the wake of the 2020 election has put people like Kirsty, a longtime critic of the election equipment industry, in the position of repeatedly explaining that while legitimate vulnerabilities can be found, there's no evidence of widespread manipulation or fraud. Even as people from the election industry are harsh critics of the voting village, they all generally agree on the main point. There's no evidence of widespread manipulation of voting systems to rig the 2020 election. So the whole again, this comes down we're using certain wording to say, hey. There was no widespread manipulation, but a lot of people focus on not so much the widespread stuff, but the stuff that happens in, say, certain districts that are known for being battle, certain states that are known for being battleground states and certain counties that are known for being, in essence, swing counties like be bellwether counties, basically. So if you've got a... An anomaly in a bellwether county and everything that in the every past pattern is being like topsy turvied then yeah people are going to ask questions and they're going to try and find look deeper into it when we delay certain investigations into things and freedom of information act requests to certain records then we start to have more things pointing toward maybe they did manipulate certain things, but it doesn't take widespread everything to do it. It just takes a few focused manipulations 
to create an F curve that then leads to people seeing like, hey, something's wrong here. Nevertheless, he said there remains a gap between election security researchers and the hacker community, more broadly in the election vendors. It's almost every other industry than elections. Gap is closing and has been steadily closing. Other industries, especially in the critical infrastructure area, have understood the value of the hacker community, the security community to work together. The election space seems to be stuck 30 years behind. This is kind of what I am meaning with legislation in at the state level, in the least, that says, hey, we need to have better IT security for our elections. Otherwise, we're gonna suffer from these vulnerabilities. If you can minimize your attack surface, then you can start to eliminate, well, it wasn't this, it wasn't this. So then it comes down to either human error or human intention as your two things. Once you eliminate every other work to elim as you're working to better eliminate every other situation. And that's why it's important for the elections industry to work on improving that and where and if possible for the states to step up and work with them not necessarily through regulation but there are other ways that states can work with the elections industry in order to improve the technical security of things of elections in order to make it more secure so we can actually blame people rather than machines when it comes down to it. Let's see. And then here's the real criticism. Election officials and the vendors argue that things have improved and have been critical of the voting village almost from the start. Ahead of the 2018 voting village, for instance, the National Association of Secretaries of State called the village a pseudo environment, which in no way replicates a state election systems, networks, or physical security. Vendors point to their own multi-layered security procedures and the development of vulnerability disclosure programs in recent years, such as a program announced by election systems and software in 2020 at DEF CON's sister convention, Black Cat. So this is like, Four years too late in many people's opinions. This should have been done like a long, long time ago. Like having this program announced in order to help make it more secure and work with the security community and researchers in order to improve the security procedures. Now, multi-layered security procedure that they talk about there are ways to replicate it. If you have the specs for it, we can, you can replicate it. It's not hard. These are technically competent people putting this together, I would hope. Problem isn't the research community at large. Um, blah, 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 blah. The company that's suing. Yeah, okay. Global Services suing Fox News and OAN for defamation of claims. Its machines were used to manipulate the election. Smith would not discuss the cases. So you, I guess you still, at the time, you've still got an ongoing case of this lawsuit and the usage thereof for manipulation purposes. But again, I don't either A, remember the details or know the details on that case to comment further on it. Let's see. Industry has been su stung, he said, pointing to a wave of headlines in 2018 about 11-year-old children hacking replica voting systems. It's hard for corporate executives to agree to fully participate after an experience like that. Well, it's kind of like hard to say that you're secure when you haven't been stung. It does take a little bit of hurt in order to improve things. But your corporate executives need to man up and realize okay, we can improve better and we really need to investigate in this in order to validate it, confirm it, and improve upon it. Rather than saying, well, I don't want to participate in this because blah, 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 I'm getting a co cushy paycheck. Uh, my paycheck matters and my if this is hurting my bottom line and so therefore... It's not really hurting my paycheck, but it looks bad on me. Well, suck it up and drive on and prove it. It's like No Man's Sky. Everybody hated it, it at first. They sucked it up and they improved upon it. And now people like it quite a bit more. 
that's all you have to do is make it better. And in a lot of ways, it'll be better off for you. If you have to rebrand, then okay, whatever. But improve upon it. Don't like just kick it off and say, I don't want to do this because of it. Let's say there's somebody simply not competent. They get access. They write up all these fanciful claims. He put on a rebuttal saying, no, none of this is correct. What's going to be get the airplay? So if somebody that is not competent gets access and they do a write-up about fanciful claims, first of all, if they're not competent and they get access in the first case, then they're probably a script kitty, Okay. And the fact that they got access means that you're really, really, really bad. And yeah, it reflects poorly on you. But that means you should be improving so that somebody that's not competent and is merely a script kitty can't get in with their, like, measly little hacks, their measly little scripts. It takes more creativity to get in. That's the thing. If you are spurned at this, then get out. You don't belong in the industry. Get out. Go away. Get Put someone else in. Um, let's see. But yeah. So anyway, that, that's the big part of it. Is that it's important to properly secure things so that it works well. And to also make it so that we can see a proper ledger of what's going on. Rather so that we can verify it so that we don't have this whole thing of people arguing with people like you're doing this you're doing this we can actually verify things properly and then we can work at the level of other manipulation otherwise like ballot harvesting or oh buying votes and so on in order to further improve the security of the election and the integrity of the election and that's where uh, SIV comes in, the Secure Internet Voting Protocol. This was one that was p brought on... What? Yeah. What was it? It was this year or last year? One of the two. So basically, it's a system done by the Election Integrity Foundation. If we scroll all the way down here, yeah, I think, somewhere. Yeah. And basically, it uses blockchain technology at, in order to provide a ledger for votes. And they did a mock election at DEF CON last week to show off like how this works and also to check for vulnerabilities in it. So you've got your docs, your protocol, and so on. So if we go to the issues over here, we can see that people have noted a couple different issues with it. But it's also open source so that you can verify it in multiple different they've got multiple verification processes so if you're setting up your own election election and you want to go deeper into it you're able to do that to verify that the software isn't doing anything funny i believe and that nothing no funny business is happening directly with the digital infrastructure Voters are freely choose without anyone learning how they voted. Verifiable tallies for widely accepted results. Let's see. Authenticated voters. Only legitimately registered voters are allowed to vote and only once per person. So if you look at the issues here, um, was it in the fixed one or was it in the other one? There was one about um, one verification and multiple votes that I saw in here. Voters can be submitted with the same ciphertext. Votes can be submitted with the same ciphertext. Same email can be verified twice. Vulnerable to chosen hosting service. So again, you've got a couple different things that come into play that cause it to be, how shall I say, vulnerable. And that may be come down to hosting and how you're doing that. See, auth token generation not using strong randomness. Spyware on voters' devices to learn their vote. Weak RNG. Well, spyware is kind of hard to work on. Sanitization. 
single off multiple rounds of vote. Okay, this one. Apparently they fixed it, but yeah. So you could have a single authorized user and still go through multiple rounds of voting. So then this creates a straw poll situation. And again, they're they use DEF CON to help test this out and see how well it worked out. So you can see you've got your vote here. And then you've got your source here. And everything in here. So if you wanted to go into it, you can. Let's go to... Nonetheless, the SIV source code is made available for transparency to enable deep security inspections. Permission is not granted for commercial or governmental usage without first acquiring a separate commercial or government license. So they want it's a nonprofit behind it, like I said. And in order to continue to support it, you need they do need money in order to continue to develop it, which is well, then anybody people that support give money to it can rig it it's like well it is kind of open source and if you've got multiple different forks then just like the linux kernel you can have someone fork their own and then be like okay mine is free of all money influence and this is how we're gonna do it let's see certified tally equipment why isn't internet voting already widespread because of security concerns, um, SIV support multiple languages, voters with disabilities, paper methods. What if voters are subject to phishing attacks? SIV automatically sends voters a confirmation email as soon as the encrypted vote is received. If there's enough unauthorized access, the voter is quickly alerted to it. Vote auth tokens can be invalidated, including after they're used. Thus, stolen auth tokens can be remedied. Note all invalidations after votes are submitted require clear justification for independent auditability. So that does make sense. You can revoke it, but you need to have a good reason for doing so. Let's see, Utah Forward Party, April Convention. Utah, it looks like, is using this system for in certain areas. My area is not using this system, just yet at least. But anyway. And so, yeah. This is a couple different ways for it. So voting security is very important and voting integrity is very important. That's where something like this comes into play we can verify no matter what side of the aisle you're on the votes it's much easier to verify votes this way and in a lot of ways it creates more of an attack surface anyway voting integrity very important also be careful what you look at <laughs> but it's a very rocky landscape and a lot of people in the industry hate that their stuff is being it's like well, you can't do the exact same thing it's like well if you tell us how you set it up we can actually replicate it pretty well what kind of encryption are you using what kind of this that and the other and we can get a really robust system set up that emulates yours almost to a t anyway if you like the content that I produce, one good way of supporting it is to actually go and buy your own VM. I've got my refer link for Frantech down in the description. And it should be under there, like, host your own stuff for what all in there and the links. But they've got a lot of different options that you can do. So if I go into order new services, you can see they've got really cheap options that'll run... If you need a small server, easy done. Two bucks a month and you're good to go. It should, or even 350 should be enough for Minecraft server. Get you up and running. Get going. And it helps support me. So go check the link in the description for that referral link and help also support and keep up my other services and support the videos. If you liked the content, if you enjoyed it if you think i deserve it like comment subscribe leave any criticisms you have or what have you i appreciate it feed that algorithm like i said and i will see you guys in the next one